king is bold or desperate. Will you engage him personally, your highness? Of course. Grigor's breath fill your wings. Reform the cohorts. At once. Your Highness. Saboteurs. Their attacks are frequent and widespread, even in the Holy Capital. The Capital? What of my father? Is His radiance he... is safe. But he has ordered the city guard strengthened. We can expect no reinforcements. That is of no matter. The Emperor's safety is paramount. I shall deal with our enemies here. Just full of surprises. First that trick with Garuda, then whatever the hell that other thing was. Didn't know you had it in you. Do it. Hey. Kill me. <laughs> it was me. I killed him. I killed Joshua. I killed them all. I'm a monster, and I deserve to die. So end it! End it now! Please! Please! Ah! <laughs> All right, I reckon I can take you, if that's what you want. But first... I thought I'd give you the benefit of my timeless wisdom. It seems to me, you see, that since you're still breathing, you might as well make yourself useful. 
Get dressed. Pretty as you are, you're not my type. I'll, uh, see you in the hall. What are you going to do now? <sighs> May as well hear what he has to say. What a fucked up situation for Clive to find himself in. The discovery that he was in fact the one that killed his own brother, I mean, it would be just devastating. He had spent, what was it, 13 years just running over the mind, running through his mind the idea that he was going to eventually get revenge on the person who killed his brother, only to find out that he did it himself. It's got to destroy him. On top of that, he's discovering that there's this monster inside of him that he can't control. And it... I mean, when's the next time it's going to come out? Will he be able to do anything to stop it next time? Is he going to put other people at risk? I don't know. But he is essentially being asked to go on. He wants to kill himself. He wants to die. But he's being pressured to move on. And of course we know that We've seen somebody who is very likely Joshua, still alive somewhere. So, you know, there was a dominant that we were chasing after, a dominant of fire that we were chasing after. Now, it seemed, it's in the context of the story unusual that there are two of these dominants of fire. So I guess maybe you could say that there could be a third one out there somewhere, but I'm going to say that's probably unlikely. So the dominant that we're chasing after is very likely Joshua. Joshua survived encounter with Ifri, and, well, they go find him eventually. Now, in the beginning of this, we got some cutscenes. There was a battle between Odin and Bahamut, and, you know, I'm a little... I gotta dive into the codices and all that of this game to get a little bit of a better perception on who the hell we're dealing with here. <laughs> I'm, I'm not entirely sure who the prince was that we watched change in the Bahamut and yes. who, who it was that changed in the Odin. I thought Odin might have been that Barnabas guy. I don't know. We're seeing a lot of things from different people's perspectives and I'm kind of my gameplay sessions for this game have been a little bit broken up because I was distracted by life, and I was also distracted by Baldur's Gate 3, and I was distracted by Resident Evil 4, and I was distracted by the fact that my computer didn't work for a little while, <laughs> and distracted by the fact that my TV broke, too. So, um, my gameplay sessions have been a little bit broken up, so that'll explain why I'm having a hard time following the story. Plus, I'm a moron. You out of the crypt, eh? You look like it. Although, I thank you for doing us the courtesy of covering up. Don't. Well, still have a bit of fight left in you. Then listen. I've arranged a meeting with Gav. In case you've forgotten, you're the one who's been putting his nose to work for. For nothing. Just listen. While you've been relaxing in your cell, Gav's been busy sniffing out your dominance. And according to his last report, he's picked up the scent. Gav's gone to a fair bit of trouble for you. The least you can do is hear the poor bugger out. He's going to meet us at the King's Fall. Pack your stuff. We'll leave as soon as you're ready. What do you know? Gav is coming through for us anyway. Of course, this is something that was unexpected. 
um, well, unexpected for Clive anyway. He believes that he was chasing after a ghost, thinking that the person who killed his brother is out there somewhere, and it, well, I mean, the person is himself, but there is somebody out there, so I'm not sure whether or not Clive has come to the same conclusion that I have here that the person that we're chasing after is in fact Joshua. But I, I wonder what the reunion between the two of these will be like. Because we hadn't seen Joshua since he was a child. I mean, Clive was a child also, but a bit of an older child. What would he be like nowadays? We've seen him in, like, cloaked and behaving in, like, in a more stoic manner than he did when he was a kid. So it's reasonable to believe that his life experiences since then have changed him, have darkened him, have turned him into less of the kind of altruistic person we witnessed him being in the beginning of the game. It's also reasonable to say he's probably more powerful by this point. But he could possibly be bittered by the fact that, like, what happened to him with between him and Clive, I mean, it's... I think it's reasonable to believe that he knows that that Ifrit was actually Clive. And there might be something that stands between them. When the two characters eventually meet up, I haven't seen that happen yet. But it could be once that happens, we'll see strife between the two brothers. And, like, really, who is to blame either side for it? I mean, even if there wasn't any thing that happened there. The fact that they haven't seen each other in 13 years is going to cause some issues there. But the fact that the violence and all that stuff and Clive for so long hunting the person that he thought killed his brother and then find out that maybe that he uh, be believing anyway that he did it Clive will be walking into this meeting with a lot of self-doubt and self-blame. He'll hate himself for everything that went, and he'll be apologetic, basically like trying to accept the blame for everything. And perhaps that will not go over too well with Joshua. Josh will be like, fuck you, man. Yeah, you are to blame. Somebody who doesn't try to argue against their own guilt oftentimes just pisses people off. It doesn't, um, it, it sort of, if Joshua already holds some sort of negative feelings towards Clive for what happened, Clive coming forward and admitting it and like that will just sort of perpetuate his own negative feelings. But anyway, I am speculating the shit out of that. I really have no idea. I am legitimately trying to not play too far in advance of when I'm recording these commentaries, so a big chunk of the story is, I mean, more than half of the story is legitimately just unknown to me, and that's the way I want to do this. I mean, tried to play this game with a live commentary, I just couldn't do it, I don't have the recording equipment set up to make it practical, so I'm settling for this, um settling for this recording after the gameplay but a few episodes at a time so I don't, you know play too much of the game before I record commentary anyway, I'm going to end the episode here thanks for watching